Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthems of the Oriental Republic of Uruguay and the United States of America.
Sanguinetti. Mr. President, as the elected leader of a free and democratic Uruguay, you have our respect, our admiration, and our heartfelt welcome. Uruguay is a friend and a country that shares with us the heritage, traditions, and values of the Americas. Our countries, as is true of so many in this hemisphere, were born of independence movements seeking to break away from colonial power. Yet those who founded our two countries fought not only to be rid of domination, but also for freedom. Our histories run parallel. Both are the stories of people struggling to be free, people striving to live up to the ideals expressed at the time of their nation's birth. Today, the people of Uruguay are reaffirming their faith in democracy. And all those who love liberty applaud this giant step forward. President Sanguinetti, we appreciate that your official delegation includes representatives from the judicial and legislative branches, as well as your executive branch of government. Separation of powers, protection of the rights of all citizens, and a healthy respect for the opinions of others are hallmarks of a truly free society. And that is what you and the current leaders of Uruguay are building. In recent years, we have witnessed an unprecedented expansion of democracy in the Americas. Just a decade ago, only one-third of the people in this hemisphere lived in democracy. Today, 90% of the people live in countries that are democratic or in transition to democracy. We should not be satisfied until all Americans, and that means every living soul from the north slope of Alaska to the tip of Tierra de del Fuego, live in freedom as is their birthright. In this hemisphere, the days of dictatorship, left or right, are numbered. The peaceful process used to reestablish democracy in Uruguay can serve as a model for others. Authoritarian regimes should take notice. Yet, while we celebrate the progress that has been made, no one should overlook the decisive battle in the cause of human freedom now taking place in Central America. The outcome will determine, ultimately, whether the people of that region will enjoy a future blessed with peace and development or instead be engulfed in tyranny and conflict. We who enjoy the fruits of liberty understand that just and lasting peace is built on freedom. Our search for peace in Central America must above all be an effort to continue the expansion of democratic freedom that has reached four of the five nations of this troubled region. We must continue to press for a negotiated solution. And in this work, we must uphold our democratic values and insist that they be the basis for any agreement that is worthy of our support. The Western Hemisphere still holds the promise of liberty and opportunity that drew our forefathers and mothers from the old world. Uruguay, like the United States, is a nation of immigrants. They came to our shores in quest of freedom and looking for the chance through hard work to improve their well-being and that of their families. Uruguay's commitment to economic growth and revitalization is well appreciated here. You have set out to attack not just the symptoms, but the underlying causes of your country's economic problems. By protecting Uruguay's good name and credit worthiness, by avoiding simplistic solutions and quick fixes, and by strengthening your private sector, you are building the confidence at home and abroad needed to carry your country into better and more prosperous times. Mr. President, in a speech to your people on April 7th, you said, the state sets the direction, but it does not move the boat. The boat is moved by the private sector. Well, this appreciation of the essential role of profit motive and enterprise bodes well for Uruguay. 
Already, your country is enjoying its first real economic growth in four years, and there's every reason to be optimistic that this upward trend will continue. Let me just add that, as Uruguay's largest trading partner, nothing makes us happier than to see your country prosper. Mr. President, I'm looking forward to getting to know you and discussing some of the issues that are of importance to both of our countries. These are exciting times, and we're proud to have you here with us and thrilled that Uruguay is again in the family of free peoples. President Sanguinetti, welcome. Señor Presidente, para cualquier ciudadano uruguayo es un elevado honor llegar a esta casa. Poderosas razones históricas se conjugan para ello. Nuestros países nacieron en el mismo tiempo histórico. Fueron parte de la misma revolución liberal que inspiró en ellos los mismos ideales. El siglo y medio de existencia independiente, desde entonces, nos ha mostrado fieles a esos mismos principios y por eso estuvimos en la misma actitud en las dos grandes guerras mundiales de este siglo, hitos definidores ideológicamente de la filosofía de los pueblos. Si esto es así para cualquier ciudadano uruguayo, más lo es para quien, como yo, llega aquí como Presidente de la República, representando a un pueblo que me ha impuesto con su voto la difícil tarea de conducir pacíficamente a nuestra República, luego de un gobierno de facto, a un régimen institucional pleno y seguro. Usted sabe, señor Presidente, que en estos 15 meses el Uruguay todo ha hecho un gran esfuerzo y ha realizado una hermosa experiencia de cambio en paz, con el pleno e irrestricto funcionamiento de sus instituciones y derechos, sin violencias para nadie. El Uruguay es heredero de una larga tradición democrática y sufrió por lo mismo particularmente la caída de sus instituciones. Siente hoy que ha retornado a aquella vieja historia y que lo ha hecho de un modo ejemplar que enriquece aquella tradición. Por esta razón, señor Presidente, como usted lo ha señalado, no está aquí solamente el titular del Poder Ejecutivo ni sus ministros, sino además el Presidente de la Suprema Corte de Justicia, el Presidente de la Cámara de Diputados, que representa al principal partido de la oposición y el primer senador de mi partido, hijo además del último presidente uruguayo que estuvo aquí en esta casa hace 31 años. Este clima de convivencia entre poderes de gobierno y partidos democráticos es el mejor testimonio que podemos mostrar al mundo de lo que hemos alcanzado en tan corto lapso. No sería leal si no dijera, sin embargo, que nuestro país vive aún serios problemas, y que ellos derivan tanto de asuntos propios como internacionales. No es fácil, señor Presidente, luchar por consolidar la democracia penosamente alcanzada y ordenar la economía doméstica cuando persisten aún condiciones económicas o financieras externas que en algunos casos dificultan y en otros llegan a anular los frutos del esfuerzo interno de nuestro pueblo. Debemos dar respuesta a las legítimas urgencias populares por recuperar los niveles de vida perdidos y hacer frente al mismo tiempo a pesados endeudamientos que hemos heredado dentro de un mundo comercial cada vez más proteccionista y cerrado. Tendencias que su gobierno, señor Presidente, se ha comprometido a enfrentar y a cuyos propósitos nos sumamos para preservar así las ventajas de un comercio mundial abierto y justo que a todos nos habrá 
sin duda, de beneficiar. Sobre muchos de esos problemas, venimos a, pan, a cambiar opiniones con usted y su gobierno, hablando con la sinceridad con que hablamos siempre, especialmente a un país al que consideramos desde siempre amigo, con el que podemos discrepar a veces, y por lo mismo tenemos el deber de lealtad, de conversar con un diálogo claro y espíritu constructivo. Sabemos que en este país democrático la opinión pública es muy importante y entenderá nuestras razones. Así como tenemos la convicción de que vuestro gobierno sabrá considerarlas para estudiar en conjunto los medios de mejorar nuestras relaciones y superar las consecuencias de estos males que enfrentamos. O el comercio internacional se abre o todos deberemos resignarnos a vivir encerrados en un nuevo feudalismo. Los más poderosos quizás duren más, pero condenados a vivir en un mundo agresivo, inestable y lleno de violencia. Los más pequeños, como nosotros, condenados a una vida mediocre, pero todos en definitiva apuntando hacia la pobreza o la falta de libertad. George Washington vislumbró la importancia de este aspecto hace ya más de dos siglos y dijo, la buena política, el humanitarismo y el propio interés recomiendan un intercambio armonioso y liberal con todas las naciones. No obstante, aún en nuestra política comercial debemos mantener una posición equitativa e imparcial, sin buscar ni conceder favores ni preferencias exclusivas, respetando el curso natural de los acontecimientos. Por eso, no reclamamos filantropías ni ampararnos en tutorías de ningún tipo. Solo precisamos socios cooperadores, fuertes en capital y tecnología, con los que podamos trabajar en conjunto para forjar un mundo mejor, guiados por los mismos ideales de libertad que inspiraron nuestros mayores. Señor Presidente, en un mundo atribulado, nuestro país es hoy, como lo fue en el pasado, tierra de paz y de democracia. Esa paz y esa democracia que hoy quisiéramos ver imperar en toda nuestra América, lograda por nosotros los latinoamericanos como fruto de nuestros compromisos históricos y nuestras responsabilidades frente al futuro. Uruguay se seguirá sumando a todos los esfuerzos políticos en favor de la paz en el mundo y especialmente dentro de nuestra América. Paz y democracia son términos indisolubles. No tendremos la una sin la otra. El Uruguay una vez más reafirma aquí su convicción en ambos objetivos que son hoy la columna vertebral de su razón de ser como nación libre e independiente. Es este el espíritu con que hoy saludamos a usted, a su gobierno y a este pueblo amigo del nuestro desde los orígenes mismos de nuestras naciones y nuestros, y nuestros estados. It is a great honor for any Uruguayan citizen to come to this house. There are strong reasons for this. Our countries were born during the same span of history and were part of the same liberal revolution which inspired them with the same ideals. Our century and a half of independent life since then has demonstrated our faithfulness to those principles. Because of this, we stood together in the two great world wars of this century milestones which have defined the political philosophies of the peoples of the world ever since. If this is true for any Uruguayan citizen, how much more so is it true for someone like me, arriving here as the President of the Republic and re representing a people that has, by its vote, entrusted me with the difficult task of peacefully guiding our Republic back after a de facto government to a full and stable institutional life. You know, Mr. President, that during these last 15 months, all of Uruguay has made a great effort 
and lived a wonderful experience of peaceful change with the full and unrestricted interplay of its institutions and rights, with violence toward none. Uruguay is heir to a long democratic tradition and therefore suffered all the more from the collapse of its institutions. Today, it feels it has returned to its old legacy and has done so in exemplary fashion, one that enhances those traditions. For this reason, as you yourself have pointed out, Mr. President, you have before you today not only the chief of the executive branch, but also the president of the Supreme Court of Justice, the president of the House of Representatives, who represents the main opposition party, and my party's leader in the Senate, who happens to be the son of the last Uruguayan president to visit here 31 years ago. This environment of harmonious cordiality among the different branches of government and democratic parties is the best evidence we can offer the world of what we have achieved in such a short time. I would not be sincere, however, if I did not mention that our country is still experiencing serious problems that stem from both domestic and international causes. It is not easy, Mr. President, to strive for the consolidation of our hard-won democracy and to put our domestic economy in order while external economic and financial conditions subsist that in some cases hamper and in other cases actually cancel out the fruits of our own internal efforts. We must respond to the legitimate and urgent call of our people to recover their past standard of living and at the same time confront the heavy debts we have inherited, all within the context of an increasingly closed and protectionist world trading system. These are trends which your government has committed itself to fight, a position we wholeheartedly endorse in order to preserve the mutual advantages of fair and open world trade. We have come to exchange views with you and your government on many of these problems. We shall speak frankly, as we always do, the more so in a country we have always considered a friend. We may at times disagree, but precisely because of our friendship, we feel that it is our duty to speak to each other with loyalty, clearly and constructively. We know that public opinion is very important in this democratic nation and will therefore understand our positions. We are also confident that your government will take them into consideration when we look together to a life of mediocrity. But all of us, sooner or later, will be staring poverty in the face. George Washington foresaw the importance of this over 200 years ago when he said, sound policy, humanitarianism, and our own self-interest all suggest a harmonious and liberal exchange with all nations. However, even in our trading policy, we must keep a fair and unbiased position without seeking or granting favors or exclusive preferences, respecting the natural course of events. For this reason, we seek neither charity nor protectors of any kind. We need only cooperative partners, strong in capital and technology with whom we may work together to build a better wor a world guided by the same ideals of freedom that inspired our forefathers. Mr. President, in a troubled world, our country is today, as it has been in the past, a land of peace and democracy. We would wish to see the same peace and democracy all over the Americas, achieved by us Latin Americans as the result of our own historical commitments and our sense of responsibility to the future. Uruguay will continue to participate in all political efforts aimed at promoting peace in today's world, especially within our America. Peace and democracy are inseparable. We cannot have one without the other. Uruguay today reaffirms once again its faith in both principles, which constitute the backbone of its very existence as a free and independent nation. Mr. President, it is in this spirit that we greet you, your government, and our friends, your people. Thank you.